okay so now let's see how uh, we, we will dissect the request messages okay so let's take few uh, you know the important examples uh, you know let me take amazon no no elearn infosec.com okay before i inspect this what i'll do i'll just start capturing that data over here okay now here i want to bring out some point for you guys when i say http when i say http that doesn't mean that it is security uh, enabled communication it is not okay it is the plain text without encryption that is going for is it okay for any server communicating with un un unsecured link no it is not okay that is the reason what we do is we will be even though when we are requesting even though when we are requesting okay once again i will do it because the first time it won't get captured so many things are happening in the background okay let me clear that as well or else i'll take this copy it open everybody please go on mute if someone is uh, not muted okay now inspect okay now let us again go to the network we'll click enter okay this one. okay so this is the one okay as soon as when i entered some request okay request and response both are getting paid okay so this is the request and what is the response you got for that request that is the response okay these are all things which we have already discussed okay but <clears throat> one thing i would like to pair them up now means like i was just giving you some information that okay this is the request header and this is the response header like that i was giving let's record it in a way that okay it will be more uh, you know make sense where by uh, including it as a uh, pair okay let's just copy this okay and let me paste it over here as a text okay now this is the request okay so you have some protocol http1 was there http2 is is currently is going to be used as well and also you can be used for some more time and http3 what is the difference in between the way you like write the html body okay content and everything right like as i said here right click and view source okay this is called as client code means the web server is bringing the same content back to our web page and it is whatever it has written over here the same thing it is getting displayed like some images link some you know the server related some in information which is there for security reasons some they don't keep it openly some they will because it will go to this location and get some more information you'll we'll go to this location get some more information like that okay so as of now what we need we have to just understand what are the request we sent and what are the response we have got so this is the request correct right so this is called as host this is user agent what is meant by user agent user agent is like when we are sending some request it tells that from which browser on which operating system has actually sent this http amazon or google or elearn infosec kind of request who has sent this request like user who is the user user agent agent in the sense like person on behalf of you sending this request to that here the agent is browser 
okay here are the things to be remembered guys attackers sometimes use what you know some automation tools that time they might be keeping some dummy user agents or some scanning tools they use that time the user agent might be something like not the latest okay or if they might have identified some weaknesses in your organization web server where if your organization web server is accepting the request from very old browser like you know mozilla 4.0 okay mozilla 4.0 which installed on your windows 10 nt6.1 means windows uh, sorry 7 uh, and higher like vista um, uh, windows 8 windows 8.1 all those comes under windows uh, nt6.1 and mine is 64 bit operating system okay and uh, uh, the revision is 8890 that means this particular uh, mozilla software so revision is 89.0 so what is this mozilla all the developers who are developing the browser like internet explorer chrome safari everyone they will be using the same you know the software internally only they will take it from the mozilla and they will create a bare body to it in the sense another new feature they are going to add which is not there with ie IE feature won't be there with Chrome. Chrome, some features won't be there in IE. Some features they will add as per their requirement and they will release it. But main underlying engine, okay, browser engine will be the same. So that browser engine is this one, okay, which is Mozilla. So they might be using the old engine, okay, that might be the case. That is also suspicious thing, okay, or they might be using some you know the automation things okay i will show you how the automation thing uh, you know it, it will be different compared to this user agent instead of mozilla it will be like you know it will be with mozilla and some kind of you know some scanning tools like nessus acunetics or that kind of things it will be there okay what is like you know they are trying to scrape your pages in the web browser okay some screen scraping uh, tools are there so those tools will have uh, their own user agent because you are not running uh, anything like there is request from the browser but you are some small software taking and you are giving that browser name sorry you are giving the website name and you are clicking enter and all as soon as like when you click enter it will go and get each and every page within that particular website for you okay that is very danger that kind of things people do so so those kind of things will also be there so user agent is very important aspect okay for what purpose uh give me a second i'll mute everyone okay give me a second uh, yeah hey, everyone go on mute please i cannot go to each and every okay so um, the first one is might be request might be might be from some you know uh, what i can say um, automation tool okay to identify whether the request is from automation tool or not this is very important i'll tell why okay you have went you have 10000 usernames uh, somehow harvested somewhere of a website okay mean somehow you got them okay now you are planning to uh, you know try brute force attack okay that means like username with some guessed passwords you have you started uh, trying to hamper that particular um web server by guessing these usernames and password correct right so that time what you will do you will definitely don't manually do that okay because so many username and password for each username at least a thousand passwords you have to try means you don't use any ma manual method you will definitely going to use some tools example for testing purpose also we will use some tools like qtp or alm 
or I don't know, a few things are there. Okay, for testing performance, like load runner, we will use. Okay, for scanning and all, we'll use. You know, scanning means like you know, website scanning and all. We'll use uh, uh, Nessa scan or uh, uh, Acunitix scan. Okay, or you know, I think Web Inspect something is there. I I guess from HCL app inspector or something app scanner or something okay these kind of tools we will use these are like you know tools which are used they might be using it for good purpose to test their performance or to check for something our attackers might be using the same tools for you know like uh, to make their um, uh, their burden little less okay when they do the manual work it will take a lot of time the same amount of uh, like the, he can reduce it by using the tool. So a lot of automation work might be going for the brute force. This is a headache for any organization. Okay. And also this is one thing from the uh, user agent, which you have to be keep focusing on. And the other thing is uh, one more issue is deprecated versions. Okay. So you, uh, say for example, Mozilla 4.0 is already deprecated and all the people are actually moved to the new version. Okay. And uh, 4.0 might be having a lot of security bugs, which uh, from the browser side, which they might have fixed, but still some uh, people, they might have requested the users means like you and me and the companies like the companies which are like serving the web pages like amazon flipkart elon infosec all these companies they might have like upgraded their servers to an extent where they'll accept only the request from the 5.0 if in case if someone has not updated their browser to 4.0 okay these guys still since those web servers are vulnerable to those requests i mean like so those attacks which are there in Mozilla 4.0, okay, these guys are going to, you know, um, make utilize, um, they'll make use of those uh, user agent related vulnerabilities and they will attack. So as a SOC engineer, you should be writing some queries to identifying or detecting some deprecated versions of Mozilla, okay, or you should be able to identify and detect if there is any constant attacks of you know like uh, uh, the the brute force attacks that are coming into your uh, organization web server so user agent actually helps you a lot in that particular aspects okay so and this particular thing is a request method i don't want to like again request method how many of request methods we have okay for get is one, uh, get is one, and post is one. Okay, this is one more. Okay, let me check. Someone has joined. Okay, get is one, post is one. Okay, delete. Is one. Yeah, delete. Okay, these things you can uh, put uh, D L E T. Okay. So these are the two important things which we use, get and post, either like this, get or post, okay? Get, okay? Which page you're asking? I am asking eLearn InfoSec homepage I am asking, okay? Then, which I, I know as a browser, I can support till HTTP 3.0 version. Okay, so please provide me eLearn InfoSec web page because I'm setting the request from here. Okay, if you have like any specific web page kept for my browser separately, which suitable for my browser, that is the only reason I'm telling from where I'm setting this. Okay, and this way we will go through everything. But as of now, remember like right, which request you are sending. Get and post is the most commonly used methods get is to get the web page get the web page but you have some information okay 
and you are requesting please give me say for example you are entering the username and password that doesn't go in get because you are sending the request only that hey this is my username and password please send me back my account summary page okay or please send me some response of my uh, you know like login after successful login page of my you know e learn info say car amazon or gmail or anything you want to see your mails and all so that time when you enter username to after when you are entering username and password in the web page right that time it is not going by get it will be like post it will be like post difference is for get for get request okay you won't be having the body see this is the headers and their values here okay request headers and values are here below to that you will have body means the carrying the data from your machine to that server and from the server if it is sending something to you okay that doesn't come in headers it will comes as the body body means it will be at the bottom okay say for example here itself i would like to show you for the request whatever hey i want the home page i want the forward slash means home page of e learn infosec what i got the response yeah i got the response for my home page okay i got the response from the home page this particular data from this server this particular thing this is there in the body this is there in the body okay in the body okay i am talking about the actual response in the sense in the body okay and headers are these this is the response first you sent a request okay this is the request header which we are currently analyzing it and this response header i have got all this hey this is the information which i am sending it to you like these all the things which you have to follow along with this bottom of this after this particular part you will have this particular thing which is this particular thing which is carried by our which is carried by our which is sent by our server so header below to that body it will be there okay so this body not only for request uh, not only for uh, uh, response for request also it will be there so no parameters parameters for this request means what is the username you have sent what is the response you have sent now sometimes what happens as soon as you get something here okay you click on you you will send some pages like forms or something you fill right okay or you do some charting right okay that is also a web request it is sending it to the server so that time this request will have like carrying some data from the within the request that user is adding some data here okay that data doesn't go in headers usually it will go in the request body here like some parameters like form details like what is your email id what is your phone number all those things goes in the request itself but not in the headers means not here but and below to that something like it knows that okay here till here it is over okay system has got that capability from there the body gets started right it knows it and it will be like creating a body and it will be sending it and the server will receive that particular information whatever you have sent okay so then it will respond okay i have received the data whatever you have sent or any specific web page it has to be sent back to you for that particular request like you know successfully submitted your form or uh, you are logged in successfully here is here are your gmails okay like that it will be displayed okay so remember that two things are very important get and post remaining like put to delete all these any other things are there are called as okay what are dangerous method dangerous method remember guys 
if someone is sending any request into your organization with put with put or delete immediately immediately block the traffic at the entrance at the gate that is at the firewall no need to hesitate okay because from externally okay someone who is there externally how come he will dictate what data should be there in your organization data correct right if something it has to be done they will take it in a programmatically different way like you want to delete some content means like a user wants to delete his own content which is there in in their database they will take a different approach but they don't use this delete method or put methods got it right okay so please make sure these methods um in your mind that okay um get and post are usually which we use okay delete and uh, and uh, put are dangerous methods which you should not be allowed and you should be keep monitoring them okay okay uh, monitoring in the sense you should check with your development team is method these methods are allowed or not if they are not allowed okay we will write a query to block that i mean like to i to identify that kind of traffic okay so that is the thing okay so and remaining header fields whatever here okay the host name that says which website data your request okay this is the thing okay and remaining all the things which you know accept language means which language this browser support encoding means when they send any data if they are sending it in a zip format means compressed format okay you are initially itself letting the server to know that okay i know these um compression methods you can send me the data by compressing in like when zip when there we have so many software right same way like for web related uh, uh, activities we have gzip deflect and B, br so usually i'll support these many you know the compression uh, you know the methods you can send it to me okay so then after that uh, forget about as i said which are not required things are not to be discussed here as part of you know only sock related aspects when you are dis discussing and this cookies also in you know session i have some session already this is my session or something like that it is telling okay so these is these are the things now you know that okay from here to you know here from here to here it is you know application layer let me keep it like this this is the application layer okay and here to here it is the presentation layer okay let me do it once again this one yeah i hope this yeah this this is the application layer and this is a presentation layer and this is the session layer okay let me take this is the session layer session layer means how long the request which i have sent should be active okay uh, like please when you send me any request i am ready to be active to receive any kind of data forever like that keep alive mine you please keep alive forever okay my connection you keep alive okay like that it is asking okay and the cookies helps you to not to re enter any username and password said again and again to making sure that okay boss i have authenticating with you these are my usernames and password okay once after uh, authenticating authentication please send me the response back me uh, response me with that particular web page what have requested but web server what it is hey boss you are not the only person whom i have to serve i have one 
black people who are requesting me every second so what i'll do is okay i will send you some cookie okay i'll send you back some cookie okay use that cookie next time when you are just entering okay gmail.com send that cookie along with that request okay so that okay i don't let you to ask i i don't ask you to enter the username or password i'll directly send back whatever your account details directly by just looking into the cookie means this cookie is some kind of you know passport or some validity card or something like that that okay government has already verified that you are a valid person of so and so location and already it's verified police have come and inquired it and they have given you passport any time if you want to go to journey just if you want to make any journey just you have to take the passport and you have to get on to the flight okay and you go there and they will be served whatever the purpose you want and you can come back as such okay so that is the thing though it is like cookie tells that okay what that not required for you to again and again sending any kind of authentication uh, process whatever it is there with the server just use the cookie and one more important point banking project this is invalid cookies are invalid in banking project if you are going for any banking project any web pages are there cookies are there forget about them because okay for banking related project once if you log in even if you are going to the next page itself the web server will send a new cookie you have to use that cookie for going to the next page and then after you entering that particular information like like you know account summary or something like that so it will be like 10 15 seconds if you remove the response it like whatever it sends right okay like 15 seconds it will be okay i am letting you this connection to active only for 15 seconds if you are not doing anything on your browser for 15 seconds that connection will be timed out and your active session is going to get expired okay remember this particular point as well okay remember this particular point as well okay fine so so now you have come across these three things right now we will pair this with with transport layer transport layer transport layer what 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 are what are the information it will include what is the information it will include uh, source port destination port source port destination port source port and destination what only that much is enough okay for me as as part of our sock related things okay that is like source port is okay is this the web page http or https tell me that particular thing first hmm? is this http or https uh, https so remember okay if it is http it will be the destination port is port 80 okay port numbers are important for our you know understanding to which service it is going 80 says that it is going to http server somewhere okay means the other system at the other end means the server is listening at port 80 just remember that much is enough some pipe is there from your transport and it that pipe is kept towards the application presentation session layer where through that pipe whatever this request is you are sending right this data through that pipe at the destination will be sent to that particular web server okay now the source port can be anything random like how many ports we have 0 to or 1 to 65536 something ports are there within this range say for example your system automatically assigned some 20 sorry oh, okay 
25,500 port is assigned as a source port. Source port always random. Remember that. Source port always random. Now we will learn about some important aspects of these ports. Okay, let's see how many applications we have and what are all different ports we have. Okay, now let us go here. For web, I have told this. Okay, now if you are sending the data, whatever it is from your system, forget about the web browser. Okay, you might be having file transfer application, you might be having, you know, this kind of putty, putty application. Okay, this might putty will use some different, or you might be using some, uh, you know, telnet, okay, to connect other systems remotely. So, what are the port numbers? So, just remember these port numbers and by heart them. Okay, one by one, we will discuss. FTP, okay, port 20 for data, okay, port 20 for data. FTP itself, port 21, if it is using for, okay, connection establishment, okay, for connection establishment, file transfer you want to do, okay, so you want to send the data that webs some file server is there somewhere some remotely okay and you have some application installed like filezilla application filezilla application which helps you like whatever the files you have directly copy to that you know you can just give the uh, let me show you that software so that it will be easy for you okay images Let me open this particular thing. Yeah. Uh, open in new tab. Okay. okay. See this? Okay. It will be like this. Which system you would like to communicate? Okay. Which system you would like to communicate? What is the username of that system? And what is the post? Uh, a password and if you don't give any port number by default for this it will take it as 21 that means the username and password is like you know authentication should happen using port 21 and the files then once after connecting to it just you have to take that source files drag it drop it to the destination system okay so this is a file transfer application, FTP application. FileZilla is one such thing, okay? You sometimes it requires for you to enter username and password. For some systems, not required to anything, just you username, okay? Or IP address or anything, such thing like that, okay? Don't give anything. <clears throat> if you don't give, like since there is no such security in place, so no need to enter username and password. That time directly, file transfer right so no nothing it is there but still the connection has to be established correct right that time for connection establishment what it will do it will use port 21 to send that data hey this is ip from where i'm coming and i'm just trying to connect you to send those files i mean like to connect with you uh, let's have the connection establishment in between in, in between both of us once if it is clear then we will have the file transfer okay so when you are copying and pasting the data you know from this machine drag and drop here right okay that time file transfer is in progress that time okay this is the protocol uh, the, this is the port used by the ftp protocol okay remember this okay so this is a one example of you know like i've just shown you then telnet is also important thing guys why i'm telling these port if your company is not allowed to use ftp from the externally someone is trying to connect your 
you know you know your servers are some systems okay if it is not allowed as a soc engineer you should have a query for to identifying such things if there are no queries then you are in a big trouble okay so make sure if you know the port numbers then you can easily write any query to detect such kind of activities okay so port 20 and 21 port numbers connections any incoming are from internally whether, whether if they are going outside to identify that so remember port 20 and 21 okay which are used for you know uh, ftp okay so the second one is dangerous only i am telling now okay telnet okay telnet is to connect to any system which is a linux or unix based systems from remotely like from here some server somewhere remotely in the, some web server somewhere remotely in us or somewhere okay what you are going to use is you are going to use some small application called as telnet okay just what you have to give you enter the ip same way like ftp enter the username and it lasts for to enter the password one dangerous part with this telnet is it is not encrypted whatever the username ip and password you are sending right it is not encrypted in the sense if an attacker is somehow already analyzing or capturing the data that is going through your router or from your home or from your office someone is if they are monitoring it okay they can see your you know the uh, usernames and passwords in the plain text in a plain text because it's not encrypted it's not in a gibberish it's not in a ciphered format so they can use no no use of telnet in the offices at all no use of telnet in the offices that is port i mean like telnet is port 23 no port to 23 okay and just write cause no encryption no encryption correct right there is no encryption okay hmm? um, communication in plain text communication is happening in plain text that is not desired at all okay okay so this problem is there right that's why we have something called as SSH means secured shell. Secured shell. Okay. To overcome this problem, we have secured shell. What is the secured shell? Secured shell. What it does? The, the port number is twenty-two. You can observe twenty-two. Okay. Sometimes. But sometimes they do, they will tell that okay I don't want port twenty two traffic also so please monitor that also if your manager or if your security uh, policy says that um, port twenty two should not be there port twenty three should not be there and port twenty should not be there twenty one should not be there only HTTP HTTPS this kind of like port eighty and other HTTPS I'll tell you. Uh, only this data should be there so that time you should jump in and see something differently okay now ssh is port 22 let me show you port 20 oh sorry sorry sorry, sorry. Mm, put it. example i'll tell i have created one linux server okay i have created some linux server uh let me just try to go to that authentication instead of like you know i have some uh, certificate ppk authentication certificate which i have i have used using that securely i would like to communicate okay uh, let me go here give me a second guys give me a second
give me a second. I'll uh, give me a second. Q, give me a second. Um, contact. Okay, so take this. Okay. Let me close this. Okay. Share this. Okay. Now what I'll do is, I have not entered anything. Okay. So I just give in the information. To securely to connect, I have given some kind of, you know, some certificate where all that information will be there to like internally server to understand whether I am genuine person or not. That information from the AWS server, I am connecting to some AWS machine. Okay. So AWS has provided me this file, aws1.ppk. Okay. Using that, I'm just trying to connect with my system name this is my system it's a ubuntu uh, ec2 something okay and this is the system name okay when i click it knows that amazon uh, aws browser i mean like web server i have to go and i have to go to the computers and in that uh, this region i have to go and in that particular region this is the machine which i have to go like that it knows okay so i'm just connecting open now let us see. Okay, now I am able to <clears throat> see. Okay, this is the this is how you can actually connect to the machines securely without any issue because this whatever which you have seen AWS dot pp AWS one dot ppk which I have received it from whom Amazon only. Okay, Amazon web server only those people only have provided me when I created it. So that certificate is the valid one in that some keys are there, which is used for like when I entered my username and you might have also observed that on which port. Okay, let me close this. This is a connection. Now I can do whatever I want. Okay, like this is now terminal I have got. I am connected to that machine. Okay, close this. Uh, would be right okay which port it is communicating ssh it is port 22 means the destination port means the server is listening at port 22 but okay to which through which client port we are connecting client port can be any random port Client port can be any random port. It can be 15,000, 20,000, which is within like 65,535 range value. Any random port it will take. Except it, since it is uh, port is 22, destination port is 22, it won't take source port also 22. Why? Because this port is kept dedicated for if you install SSH server, it's because this putty is. It is SSS client, okay? SSH client, some software we are using called as Putty. What it will do, it, it is an SSH protocol client, like browser, how you have same way, browser for what purpose web page? For Putty is for SSH, okay? There are so many other softwares are also there through command line also you can do all those things you can do. But this is one application which we are using it to communicate with SSH. Okay, check with your organization also that what are the port numbers you should be allowed. In that we are learning few port numbers uh, now today. Okay, so SSH is port 22. All the people they will forget to learn the port numbers and they don't understand what is the significance of SSH, Telnet, difference in between FTP. So you should be having clarity in that so that while you are working, you don't have any such issues you are going to face. Okay, so that is the thing. Now, DNS is also there, correct, right? What is DNS? Anyone have any idea? So domain naming system like uh, okay. domain to IP mapping, whenever we do okay okay that is correct okay but in a clear cut way i'll tell 
okay i have bought my machine brand new pc today okay and i have given in my web browser okay www.elearninfosec.com okay that says it is just a name okay but when we are creating the body remember this guys when we are creating the body when we are creating application layer presentation layer session layer all these things data we are creating transport layer you have done that okay but for some more information is required for you what is that information that is ip addresses also you have to put that is source ip and another part is destination ip is important for this to reach to the destination source ip you know what is the source ip your system ip only that might be 192.168.1.10 or something like that okay any one private ip correct right any one private ip if you are at home it will be like this if you are at you know uh, at a small size company uh, could you please go on mute whoever it is i would request please go on mute yeah 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 okay so 192.168.1.10 is called as an okay, internal ip that is private ip same way you have different ranges also this this or it might be i will say like this some number x x x okay or it can be 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot some number anything it can be okay or it can be 172 dot 160 guys hello guys you are there yes sir yeah. 172 dot 16 16 dot huh? sure 100% yeah 16231 uh, we can use dot xxx dot xxx something okay so yeah okay so like this you might be finding so usually 192 it starts with or 10.172 till this one is 36 or 30 31 okay 16 to 31 yeah 16 to 31 so these are the ranges of your private ip so source will be any of these but the destination for your organization okay what you have to do is let me put it not your organization in the sense like where you are reaching this ip address you don't know it yet because you know only domain name someone your friend told that okay hey, visit this website this website is good nice offers are there you entered it but it has to go to somewhere remotely anything over the internet goes via ip okay so that is the reason the ip has to be kept here by your system so since it doesn't know even though it created all this information okay internally without knowing like you cannot see it with your naked eyes it is all happening in the background all this information is happening in the background you don't even aware of it you are just entering www.google.com okay so now what happens is oh i don't know the destination okay of that particular system okay because the ip address might be changing all the time of those machines okay maybe due to the decision which that company might have taken or for the security reasons or for like when they change one location to another geographical locations because ips are assigned based on the geographical locations as well okay now that particular ip you don't know it as of now okay so what you will do hey what happened okay so what you are going to do is now okay you don't know the ip address right okay for that what you will do you will do some kind of process called as dns dns 
what is meant by dns let us see <clears throat> you have this is your router okay oh sorry this is your router okay and let me remove this oh god oh god oh god okay this is a router example will take your home only you can apply it for anything okay you have total three systems are connected or one system is connected that is enough let me take it in this way and take it yeah okay so guys this is yeah the router okay now let us see you are connected to this particular system that is your laptop okay okay now this is your laptop consider nice laptop okay now what you are going to do is you are all connected to where your isp your isp is also there for you who is connected in the internet itself through your isp only you have to connect to anywhere in between in internet so many routers are there so many routers are there all are connected all are connected only okay for this once again i would like to show please see this like this <clears throat> okay this is this once again i am just showing you for your reference if some people who haven't seen this so that is the only reason why i am showing this so different countries see these dots are nothing but white dots are nothing but the routers okay every country is connecting with another country using this particular you know this white white dots are there those are all routers exited so within the country also so many these kind of routers will be there which connecting from one city to another city one location to another location within the city all those things okay so all these things whatever you observe outside will also be there like so many white white dots should be there inside here like countries how they connect i have shown there will be some other things which are like cities also how they connect states also how they connect using some similar kind of what white dots within the country like that so for your better picture i am showing it the higher level picture okay so these routers now you have to go to from india like from here to within india first you uh, i am in bangalore okay so bangalore uh, one location okay say for example eric is somewhere here in australia okay so from here we have to connect here okay so how you are going to do from here um, i'll be connecting to my bangalore office from bangalore office uh, you know the router to the you know some uh, bangalore main central you know some other gateway router or some this guy has leased right that particular router from there to maybe to the chennai and from the chennai to uh, sub like main gateway india gateway towards the east side we have that it will go to andaman and from there to you know the the singapore from singapore to it might be connecting to indonesia or uh, you know uh, malaysia from there it will connect to the australian gateway from there internally so many routers will be there from there it will be connected to the specific endpoint so just remember this so to do this domain name never helps us out it only the thing which is required is the ip address to route from here to here because this guy knows who is connected to him he is maintaining the routing table that okay um, some information that okay to reach australia take this path to reach us take this path something like that okay some knowledge is there but they know only ip address okay so so many routers will be interconnected in the internet okay so now i know only the domain name that is e learn give me a second give me a second okay that is e learn info sec.com i know only this i want the domain name so what we will do is 
our i will simplify this network now so before sending this www dot uh, elearn infosec request as a web request internally i will send a request to my web server so my my operator this is the operator okay consider this is the operator router this is the operator router okay and this operator router will be having so many servers connected to him itself for his office purposes something some purpose in that one server is called as dns server because this dns server what it will do in world every one hour okay every one hour okay it will be keep updating what are the current domain name like google.com what is its ip address ip address that is two ip address ipv4 and ipv6 okay it will be keep getting updated okay and elearn infosec.com what is the ipv4 and what is the ipv6 if it is not their ipv6 it will be empty if it is there ipv ipv4 definitely must be there because entire internet is still working on ipv4 some like 32.60.9.10 okay like that like amazon.com okay like 52.3.6 and it's some ip ipv6 something okay like this entire world domain names will be kept over there just remember that so dns server will keep the record of the domain names and their respective you know uh, what do you say respective uh, you know uh, what i can say that uh, ips okay so that is important thing which you have to remember okay and i would like to give some more information like some call flow how it happens uh, like this domain name here it is that you have to get it on to your machine now so how you are going to get it that small you know the flow of request and how it gets response we have to see now say consider e learn infosec this is important interview question okay e learn info okay e learn info sec okay dot com okay consider this e learn info sec dot com is a new website i have just created and it is not here also in my operator you know operator uh, whoever it is could you please go on mute okay uh i don't think they are listening to me okay yeah okay yeah. so now www.elearninfosec is a new website which someone has created myself only some somewhere i have kept it as of now and i sent a link to my friend okay just now only i have created it okay still my you know the operator mobile network operator here in my case say for example airtel example you take his dns server is also not having my ip address because it is not updated yet okay so what how it happens okay now that particular i have shared the link that hey, i have created a new elearn infosec website could you please check and see how it looks feel okay is it good or not first what it will do you will enter the elearn infosec info second year browser okay it will create all that whatever the application presentation all that you know session day things and it will add port number source port destination port now it will put uh, source ip and destination ip doesn't have so what it will do it will immediately it will stop its work here and start generating a dns request before generating the dns request first it will check in the system itself dns cache dns cache will be the cache memory will be there means previously all the websites whatever we are visited visited their ip addresses along with the domain names will be stored 
in that particular location whether this website is there or not if it is not there since it is very new right it won't be there definitely in dns cache okay so what it will do it will be going and requesting to the okay you know one uh, dns server or dns resolver or resolver okay from your machine it will send we will see the headers and all during log analysis of the dns as of it is not required because i just want to make sure it is like your as a story that's it okay as a flow you should know that's it okay uh, we'll see the actual fields and all later during the log analysis okay so it will stop this work since it is not there in the cache your laptop will send a dns request okay to whom to the resolver so the dns request will be arriving to this dns server dns request to this dns server now the dns server has received it and checked it in its server and come to know that hey i don't have this particular e-learn infosec in its database if it is not there i don't have it in your data in my database okay could you please go and check in the root server so it will tell that to the root i mean like to go to the root server so it will say let me check in the root server let me check in the root server okay so it will start checking in it in the root server root server is what you know okay there are 13 root servers are there okay throughout world those are the routers uh, like those are the servers where uh, in different geographical locations are there all the domain names will be updated over there okay the same copy of 13 servers in different different locations whichever it is nearest to you to that particular route server the request will go this is the root server means like main all the domain names will be there definitely that's what their hope okay so the domain name uh, if it is on web like internet okay so it should be here so it has come to know that hey which uh, domain is that okay it is elearninfosec.com okay it is elearninfosec.com oh you mean to say dot com yeah it is a dot com okay see i don't even i don't have that guy might be he is just created that website since i don't have it you go and check because that is not updated in the root server also because every root server will get updated after one hour or 30 minutes or something but your friend has like just updated uh, five minutes before and he shared that link so root server or the dns server is also not yet updated so for that what you'll do this root server will tell it is also connected to some router and it is like this and it will tell that okay let me check with the check with the top level domain okay so it will be telling that top level t a tld server tld server means all the dot coms who has owned all the dot coms who has owned okay i know you go and get in touch with them so it will tell that information to this result because whom we have requested dns server only we have requested now the who has to resolve it dns server only has to resolve it so every response will go to this guy only not to you so it will come to know okay i have to reach out back to the uh, tld uh, top level domain server top level means dot com dot net okay dot io okay um you know dot tv something like that it will be there right after domain that is called as top level domain okay you have to make sure okay what kind of top level domains you have to allow in your organization that is also important okay if you know some dot blah 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 website should not be allowed 
yeah they should not be allowed adult content and all those things with the you know dot with something like that or so domain controlling is also very important so you for that you have some other appliances itself like proxies and all other things but in case even if they are working or not some things which you have to like threat intelligence you have to have and you have to start monitoring that as well okay this is that is something different picture which we are not required to discuss but you have to monitor all the domain names also as part of soc okay so now this top level domain every top level domain will have a server so for dot com also one server is there say for example this is the dot com server let me remove this this is the dot com server dot com uh, top level domain server okay tld server for dot com so all the domain names first someone is buys from e learn infosec or amazon dot com or uh, some kind of dot com related domain here they will be registered that okay this domain is bought through some guy as uh, some guy um, uh, from godaddy dot com godaddy website so uh, definitely this might be available there or this dot uh, com domain is bought from you know uh, what is other uh, uh, you know bigrock.com or namecheap.com like that kind of information they will be keeping like domain name with who is the seller I means seller I means seller ip address okay their servers okay so that kind of information so it has given like okay you can reach tld of dot uh, com so it with the request will go and from there through the router it will come to this server okay hey i want e learn infosec dot com uh, dns uh, uh, you know the ip address ip ip address i want it will check in it okay and comes to know that oh this guy has bought from godaddy dot com okay that godaddy server ip address it will give what we call it as uh, okay uh, uh, authent uh, sorry authoritative server means i have given this guy has given authority okay uh, this domain name as of now with uh, okay so and so authority authoritative server so it will respond okay you have to go and check with some authoritative server some some you know godaddy or big rock means as of now that name authority is given to some third party websites some third party domain name resellers as of now it is not under our control it is under their control so once if you get that you will reach that particular server now they are holding it right definitely if they are hosted means they will have ip address that whatever the web server whichever the web server it is hosted right they have to they must include they have to point out to a uh, like where the web page is hosted he might have uh, hosted the web page in amazon somewhere and that amazon ip address whatever is 65.10.3 here the web page they have hosted right all that e learn infosec that ip must have given here so that okay his like to the internet that web page only will be displayed because once they come like e learn infosec they have to come here and they have to get where it is hosted to that particular ip so the ip is where is what it is the location of the web page where it is hosted means where that website is actually physically present in some server not the domain name where it is okay so domain name is for our reference okay but ip address where it is physically present so that i can reach to that now it will tell that okay here this particular location some 63.10 it is there so that response we will send it to the dns now dns will think that ah at the end i got the ip address i should let this guy know okay and this guy knows the ip address 
now the destination ip address will be kept here 63.50.3.10 or something like that okay some public ip always remember okay all the external domains will be having the public ip address say for example some google.com is trying to reach but the destination ip is some 192 dot something like that okay is it suspicious or not means internal ip anywhere it will be there destination ip uh, yeah, for google is it uh, 192.168 no it should be something so that kind of some attacks might also you might see if already attacker is within your organization okay now so now you have come to know that okay like the ip address now you will keep that ip address okay and then you will put your source mac address what is the source mac address your system physical address correct right and what is the destination mac address okay since you don't know this google this 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 whatever the e-learn infosec some web servers physical address you don't know because you you don't know where like which condition what server it is itself so what you will do the routers mac address you are going to put and send okay so this is what it is called as you know dns dns um uh, flow dns how dns works means you have to tell all these things things to remember okay always first thing the request from the pc for getting the ip address of the website which you are requesting if you don't know it will go to the dns resolver that is the first point and if the dns resolver doesn't have okay then it will go to the you know uh, 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 the root level uh, domain that is this one root level means all 13 root servers are there in G currently all domains will be updated over there every one hour there also okay if the, there also if it is not present it will redirect it to the top level domain top level domain means like dot com dot in um dot au or uh, uh, you know dot us dot uh, io such kind of things okay so it will it will go to that particular top level domain and in the top level domain it clearly informed that hey this domain has sold it to so and so godaddy serv authentication server you can that ip address is this you go to that ath uh, authoritative server they will provide you the ip address okay then it will be informed it to the dns server why it is informed it to dns server every time because if it is identified somewhere in between okay the dns will update like if it tells that okay i have one i have the update of you know elearn infosec ip please take this means it will update it in its table and sends that response to the client so that next time if someone comes up with some request for e-learn infosec okay then it will only serve instead of moving here 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 all these things got it right so everything it is asking everyone and please let me know whether you have it or not they are telling like okay now top level domain it is not there you can uh, go to the uh, you know the i have uh, uh, authoritative server is there you go to connect with those uh, authoritative so that is godaddy example it will go and then the request will from that dns server go to authoritative server and the authoritative server is holding okay uh, oh we have only per candidate has purchased uh, the domain name with us and as of now he is hosting that web page here at this particular ip address that kind of table they have and that ip will be sent it to you and you will update i mean like uh, sent it to the dns uh, resolver and dns resolver updates that particular information in its database and sends that copy of it to the system okay now this is how the dns works we'll see the internals of the dns later so the request is sent from a random port and the dns server is listening to all these requests whatever have sent right the these dns 
entities, whatever it is here, this DNS resolver is listening at port 53. Is listening at port 53. Listening at port 53. All the requests. What if you send a DNS request from your machine, okay, to, uh, you know, uh, to the to the DNS resolver at port 50 or 51 or 54 or 80 or 90 because this guy is not serving over there. So you won't get any response. Okay, that port itself, it is not working. Got it, right? Okay, you might be getting some error. What is that error? We'll see later. Okay, but you won't get any response. Okay, so remember the thing that, okay, uh, this DNS server is listening. When the client send, it might be sending it from anyone, you know, the uh, uh, random port, but the destination where it is trying to reach means the server is listening. DNS server is listening at port 53. Got it right? Okay. So now we are slowly covering few, few port and their services as well when we are covering like when we are trying to reach but the main concept here is okay http correct right http that's what where we have started it okay so now http oh, http okay is working okay if any web server is serving http pages okay they are nothing but working at port 80 okay so now is it okay any server when you are sending any request from your client to the server to use it in i mean like uh, to to serve it in an unsecured way okay is it like uh, good for the customer and the the company no it is not but some people they might be doing some mistakes like you know like one which I have shown you, okay. Instead of putting HTTPS, he might have kept only HTTP and uh, might have entered eLearn InfoSec. That time, okay, before I was sending, there was no lock symbol, okay. That time the request will go, okay. And the server will respond back to you, okay. Hey boss. Come on, where it is? Um, yeah, I think we have faced this issue last time also. Okay, let me go to uh, HTTP. Okay. I, I let me. Okay, so take this. I hope you are able to view the screen. Okay, I've requested for google.com web page. Okay, for that, let me check. It has clearly told that Location, 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 location. Last time also we have faced the same page issue. Mm -hmm. Strict trans, uh, transport security. Okay. Some strict transport security like that it has told here using some field not required for you guys. But that time, okay. That means like I have to uh, use HTTPS. So it will be sending the request again from your machine uh, to the, you know, the server using, changing it automatically to HTTPS because if you, even though if you are given like this, if you see here, okay, but it got converted into HTTPS because whatever your sent request is, um, like here you are not able to see port number port number you are able to see in wireshark i don't want to uh, confuse the new people so i am asking the home page home page of google.com for that 
okay it is telling that okay it is good but you have you know you know that uh, it has to be going to https like that it will be because here it is not like it will be strict transport security that's what the response means okay i should be um, you know like using the um, https so for that it will send a new request with https and sends without knowing to you because i didn't keep http i, I didn't keep http yes i have kept it http but it automatically turned to https because the servers in the organization even they are ready to accept http but what they are doing instead of like blocking the traffic they are telling instead of you asking us like uh, reaching to http we are not serving here any web page but we are redirecting you okay we are redirecting you to go to http yes got it right we are requesting you to go to http yes okay give me a second give me a second any interesting thing okay let it be okay so uh where we are here okay so port http when we sent when we clicked on http the web page whatever it is like we are requesting http is the so destination port is kept as 80 okay and the ips won't get changed the dns whatever internally it gets read that ip won't get changed in the same machine port 80 it will be there at the server it will go there and port server will tell that you have to follow strictly http i mean security so the response is received okay there is no such thing called as https it is a http security only secure secure okay same http only but it will be sent to the data on port 443 there is no such thing called as http yes as a separate protocol the same http only if the data goes on port 443 to the server source port might be something but the server is listening at 443 that is called as http secure the server instead of http if it is on port 80 that is http the 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 same http if it is on 443 that is like secure secure means like okay i am telling you to connect with me okay as soon as when it receives okay these are the algorithms that you have to follow to connect with me and the server will encrypt it and send it okay whatever the communication happens in between the source and uh, the destination right it will be more secure in encrypted format here that is not possible that's why only the reason it told that to move on to port 443 where https why they have kept like this because worldwide there is some standard that browser when you say http it will automatically puts the destination port as 80. what if a server like amazon is changed its port number to like some 5000 as destination port so browsers they don't they don't know that this particular thing is there on 5000 port the amazon server okay so now what you'll you will be looking for amazon.com http or https and on port 80 and 443 it will go there and there the service itself it is not available that http http service itself it is not available so you won't be able to get any web page back to you so that what makes the business will go down for amazon correct right there won't be any business that's why like ftp or http or anything through the to the world okay like the clients when they develop like putty or you know the browser or any other standard applications when they develop right okay they develop with an intention that they will be listening at so and so port okay so they will be opening working on those ports. that's why destination ports you have to 
remember properly source ports like randomly system our system is sending the request whatever the random port it want to keep it will keep okay apart from these uh, you know like reserved ports port numbers okay so 443 is for http is that clear for you guys okay so if 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 this particular uh if there is no dns in your system okay if it is by default it will go to the operator okay uh because it is all obtained automatically right so you are connected to whom operator if you want only dns request has to go to the google just enter 8.8.8 .8 sorry okay and this just click okay that time the request what it will do when you enter some you know new website like uh, um bittorrent or some website google.com or very first time if you are uh, reaching that website that time the request does not go to the you know like as you mentioned i mean like it since it is it is it is like you know google dns server right so let me take that okay google dns server address okay so 8.8.8 .8 and another one more alternative is 8.8.4.4 .4. okay so these are the two different ip addresses domain name servers not only that cloudflare is also has got one see this is 1.1.1.1 see like this okay and this is 1.0.0.1 okay got it right okay so there are so many dns service providers are also that you can use them also they, maybe they might be like getting in touch with the authoritative servers uh, as soon as when they they might be paying something to authoritative servers so that they will be getting immediately updated uh, dns servers and all so things to remember here is as soon as when a request comes for the dns server okay if whatever if you are mentioned which dns server if nothing is there then it will go to the operator dns server if you have mentioned that no 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 i don't want operator because he is very slow every one hour but i know that google does it every two minutes okay so i will be keeping um, that dns server uh, as a this thing then i will be like 8.8.8 .8 as manually i have configured like how uh, i have shown it over here then it will be easy okay so as soon as whatever you name you mention to that server only it will go that server also does the same thing if it doesn't have anything it also goes to the root server and then if it is also not there then it will come back uh, to the uh, uh, top level domain server and then it will go and come back to the uh, again the whatever the google or cloudflare server and then from there it will go and contact the authoritative name server then it will get the ip address and then that ip address will be sent to the customer directly got it right okay this is how it happens the flow let me stop the recording itself